Hello FX fans and welcome to Flight Deck. I'm Nathan and I'll be your captain on this journey. We're at Reout 2024. Reout 2024 was a real blast. And thanks to everyone who visited our marquee. In this episode of Flight Deck, I'll share a few of my favorite aircraft from the static displays and chat with some pilots and aircrew. First up is the Turbo Firecat, which has a pretty cool name. Originally a Grumman S2 tracker, used by the military for anti-submarine missions, it was modified in Canada by Conair. They fitted it with turboprop engines and water tanks in the weapons phase. The Turbo Firecat was first delivered to the French Security Civil in 1982. After being retired in 2020, a private group called A3A restored it and returned it to service in October 2023. Next, we spoke to the aircrew of the E3A Sentry. Sure, I can start. I'm, uh, my name is Ruben Donkerford, uh, Cross I'm Duck. I'm a pilot. I uh, used to fly uh, F-16s, but now I'm one of the lucky ones that gets to fly the uh, AWACS for about four and a half years now. Really enjoying it. This is Rob. Yeah, Rob, call sign Bruce. Uh, I'm a technical director of this aircraft uh, since 2011. I've been away for a couple of years to go to the air staff, but now back since one and a half year and uh, Worked with the most beautiful squadron on NATO Guided Kirchen Squadron 2 with the Lion in its crest. So happy to represent that one here at Fairford. Ever since I was a small boy, believe it or not, I used to be small. I, uh, I really wanted to fly airplanes. The faster the better. So I was lucky to have a career in fighters. But I'm really enjoying the latter part of my career in the, uh, in the big airplane here. Yeah, for me, my background is uh, air defense, uh, airborne battle, or battle management and command and control. I uh, have a background on the ground-based uh, air defense system. Uh, started flying in 2011. The beautiful part of it with a unit like this is that it's a multinational unit. So we have 19 nations representing on a NATO Airbase Guard Incursion who fly together. On every single sortie in average, we have at least nine different nationalities on board. That's pretty awesome. And having the responsibility to run a crew like that, also on a deployment like this, or any operational deployment, that is wonderful. Flying, it, it's planning for that flight the day prior, uh, the latter part, or the bigger part of that day. And on the day of flying, depending on how long we fly, uh, usually it's, uh, it's up to eight or nine hours with some air refueling in between to, uh, to fly the missions we are tasked for by higher command. Uh, show up way on time uh, to do the last minute briefings, to check everything, uh, the weather, the flight plans, everything else. And then we go to the jet, takes about an hour to start it up, and then uh, we'll fly to the area. We fly to the area where the guys in the back can, uh, can do their mission. We make sure we stay there, and then we uh, bring them back safely. That's the plan every time. Yeah, so basically what we do, uh, he as an aircraft commander, me as a mission commander, we coordinate very well in front. So like a couple of days before flight, we start to look at what the mission profile is that we're tasked to fly. Uh, how many people do we need? What instruction do we need to do? What kind of facilities do we need? So we translate that into a coordination on what we can and cannot do. Uh, after that, we start to build a brief for the rest of the crew. So the day before flying, I start briefing the crew and cutting it out in small pieces small tasks for every section and then we build that into a complete plan just before we fly. So what people often have the, 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 the idea that we show up in the morning, grab a jet and go fly a bit, that's definitely not the case. It's like two or three days in advance we start planning uh, and on the execution day everything should be solid in that case. It's based on a Boeing 707. If you can count a little, then uh, the ones you take on a holiday at 777 or 787 even. Uh, this one is an old jet. Not a lot of uh, electronics, not a lot of uh, new uh, airframe stuff on the airplane. It's still old fashioned flying, which makes it really appealing for us. I have to work to make this airplane do what I want it to. Uh, other than that, the equipment inside is state of the art. Uh, it's fun to fly. It makes me earn my money. So, does that answer your question? Yeah, as I said, it's the basic model of the Boeing 707, as everybody is familiar with. But then with the additional mission equipment on board, so instead of luggage, there is the bay where we put all our equipment in. 
Uh, we, of course, have the radar, the passive system, the radio, the data links and what have you. That is all pretty much updated continuously. So the aircraft may be a little bit older, but they're continuously modified in order to execute the sortie that we have to execute. The Twin Otter is still in production and is popular for both land and water use. The British Antarctic Survey specialises in researching the polar regions and other frozen areas of the Earth, including the oceans and atmosphere. BAS operates several research bases and the Royal Research Ship, the Sir David Attenborough, along with a fleet of aircraft. Their fleet includes one de Havilland Canada Dash 7 and four de Havilland Canada DHC 6300 Twin Otters. Those were a few of my favourites from React 2024. Did you attend the show? Let me know in the comments down below. If you want more React content, follow our socials where we'll be posting more chats with pilots and clips from the show. Now, if you're an aviation photographer, you won't want to miss this. We're giving one lucky winner the chance to win £250 to spend on our website, £50 to spend on Runway 25, an annual membership to Wonderworks and more. If you'd like to enter, check the link in the description below. This month, Airfix surprised us all with the release of the Mark 8 Spitfire in 124 scale. With 452 parts and free scheme options, this kit is perfect to sink your modelling teeth into. That's all we have time for on this month's episode of Flight Tech. I know it's been a while, but we're getting back to monthly episodes, so make sure you're subscribed to the channel. Nathan, over and out.